All right, we're taking you back now to Lansing, Michigan, where the sentencing hearing for former USA Gymnastics doctor Larry Nasser is underway. Earlier, Olympic gymnast Ali Reisman spoke, and we want to play that back for you now, so let's listen in. Thank you. Please state and spell your name for the record. Okay. A L E X A N D R A R A I S M A N. Thank you. What would you like me to know? Your Honor, thank you for the opportunity to make this statement here today. And thank you for providing the time and flexibility for all the other brave survivors to make their statement. Each survivor deserves to be heard equally. I didn't think I would be here today. I was scared and nervous. It wasn't until I started watching the impact statements from the other brave survivors that I realized I too needed to be here. Larry, you do realize now that we, this group of women you so heartlessly abused over such a long period of time, are now a force and you are nothing. The tables have turned, Larry. We are here, we have our voices, and we are not going anywhere. And now, Larry, it's your turn to listen to me. There is no map that shows you the pathway to healing. Realizing that you are a survivor of sexual abuse is really hard to put into words. I cannot adequately capture the level of disgust I feel when I think about how this happened. Larry, you abused the power and trust I and so many others placed in you, and I am not sure I will ever come to terms with how horribly you manipulated and violated me. You are the USA Gymnastics National Team Doctor, the Michigan and the United States Olympic team doctor. You were trusted by so many and took advantage of countless athletes and their families. The effects of your actions are far reaching. Abuse goes way beyond the moment, often haunting survivors for the rest of their lives, making it difficult to trust and impacting their relationships. It is all the more devastating when such abuse comes at the hand of such a highly regarded doctor since it leaves survivors questioning the organizations and even the medical profession itself, upon which so many rely. I am here to face you, Larry, so you can see I've regained my strength, that I'm no longer a victim, I'm a survivor. I am no longer that little girl you met in Australia where you first began grooming and manipulating. As for your letter yesterday, you are pathetic to think that anyone would have any sympathy for you. You think this is hard for you? Imagine how all of us feel. Imagine how it feels to be an innocent teenager in a foreign country, hearing a knock on the door, and it's you. I don't want you to be there, but I don't have a choice. Treatments with you were mandatory. You took advantage of that. You even told on us if we didn't want to be treated by you knowing full well the troubles that would cause for us. Lying on my stomach with you on my bed, insisting that your inappropriate touch would help to heal my pain. The reality is you caused me a great deal of physical, mental, and emotional pain. You never healed me. You took advantage of our passions and our dreams. You made me uncomfortable, and I thought you were weird. But I felt guilty because you were a doctor, so I assumed I was the problem for thinking badly of you. I wouldn't allow myself to believe that the problem is you. From the time we were little, we are, ta we are taught to trust doctors. You are so sick, I can't even comprehend how angry I feel when I think of you. You lied to me and manipulated me to think that when you treated me, you were closing your eyes because you had been working hard when you were really touching me, an innocent child, to pleasure yourself. Imagine feeling like you have no power and no voice. Well, you know what, Larry? I have both power and voice, and I am only beginning to just use them. All these brave women have power, and we will use our voices to make sure you get what you deserve, a life of suffering spent replaying the words delivered by this powerful army of survivors. I am also here to tell you to your face, Larry, that you have not taken gymnastics away from me. I love this sport, and that love is stronger than the evil that resides in you and those who enabled you to hurt many people. 
You already know you're going away to a place where you won't be able to hurt anybody ever again. But I am here to tell you that I will not rest until every last trace of your influence on this sport has been destroyed like the cancer it is. Your abuse started 30 years ago, but that's just the first reported incident we know of. If over these many years just one adult listened and had the courage and character to act, this tragedy could have been avoided. I and so many others would have never, ever met you. Larry, you should have been locked up a long, long time ago. Fact is, we have no idea how many people you victimized or what was done or not done that allowed you to keep doing it and to get away with it for so long. Over those 30 years, when survivors came forward, adult after adult, many in positions of authority protected you, telling each survivor it was okay that you weren't abusing them. In fact, many adults had you convinced the survivors that they were being dramatic or had been mistaken. This is like being violated all over again. How do you sleep at night? You were the decorated by USA Gymnastics and the United States Olympic Committee, both of which, which put you on advisory boards and committees to come up with policies that would protect athletes from this kind of abuse. You are the person they had, quote, take the lead of athlete care. You are the person they say, quote, provided the foundation for our medical system. I cringe to think that your influence remains in the policies that are supposed to keep athletes safe, that these organizations have for years claimed, quote, state of the art. To believe in the future of gymnastics is to believe in change. But how are we to believe in change when these organizations aren't even willing to acknowledge the problem? It's easy to put out statements talking about how athlete care is the highest priority. But they've been saying that for years, and all the while this nightmare was happening. False assurances from organizations are dangerous, especially when people want so badly to believe them. They make it easier to look away from the problem and enable bad things to continue to happen. And even now, after all that has happened, USA Gymnastics has the nerve to say the very same things it has said all along. Can't you see how disrespectful that is? Can't you see how much that hurts? A few days ago, USA Gymnastics put out a statement attributed to its president and CEO, Carrie Perry, saying she came to listen to the courageous woman and said, quote, their powerful voices leave an indelible imprint on me and will impact my decision as president and CEO every day. This sounds great, Ms. Perry, but at this point, talk is cheap. You left midway through the day and no one has heard from you or the board. Carrie, I have never met you, and I know you weren't around for most of this, but you accepted the position of President and CEO of USA Gymnastics, and I assume by now you are very well aware of the weighty responsibility you've taken on. Unfortunately, you've taken on an organization that I feel is rotting from the inside, and while this may not be what you thought you were getting into, you will be judged by how you deal with it. A word of advice. Continuing to issue statements of empty promises, thinking that will pacify us, will no longer work. Yesterday, USA Gymnastics announced that it was terminating its lease at the ranch, where so many of us were abused. I am glad that it is no longer a national team training site, but USA Gymnastics neglected to mention that they had athletes training there the day they released the statement. <laughs> USA Gymnastics, where is the honesty? Where is the transparency? Why must the manipulation continue? Neither USA Gymnastics nor the USOC have reached out to express sympathy or even offer support. Not even to ask, how did this happen? What do you think we can do to help? Why have I and others here probably not heard anything from the leadership at the USOC? Why has the United States Olympic Committee been silent? Why isn't the USOC here right now? Larry was the Olympic doctor and he molested me at the 2012 London Olympic Games. They say now they applaud those who have spoken out, but it's easy to say that now. When the brave women who started speaking out back then, more than a year after the USOC says they knew about Nasser, they were dismissed. At the 2016 Olympic Games, the president of the USOC said that the USOC would not conduct an investigation and even defended USA Gymnastics as one of the leaders in developing policies to protect athletes.
That's the response a courageous woman gets when she speaks out. And when others joined those athletes and began speaking out with more stories of abuse, were they acknowledged? No. It is like being abused all over again. I have represented the United States of America in two Olympics and have done so successfully. And both USA Gymnastics and the United States Olympic Committee have been very quick to capitalize and celebrate my success. But did they reach out when I came forward? No. So at this point, talk is worthless to me. We're dealing with real lives in the future of our sport. We need to believe this won't happen again. For this sport to go on, we need to demand real change, and we need to be willing to fight for it. It's clear now that if we leave it up to these organizations, history is likely to repeat itself. To know what changes are needed requires us to understand what exactly happened and why it has happened. This is a painful process, but it's the only way to identify all the factors that contributed to this problem and how they can be avoided in the future. This is the only way to learn from these mistakes and make gymnastics a safer sport. If ever there was a need to fully understand a problem, it is this one right now. To accept that problem is limited to just what we know now is irresponsible, delusional even. Each new day seems to bring a new survivor. We have no idea just how much damage you caused, Larry, and we have no idea how deep these problems go. Now is the time to acknowledge that the very person who sits here before us now, who perpetrated the worst epidemic of sexual abuse in the history of sports, who is going to be locked up for a long, long time. This monster was also the architect of policies and procedures that are supposed to protect athletes from sexual abuse for both USA Gymnastics and the USOC. If we are to believe in change, we must first understand the problem and everything that contributed to it. Now is not the time for false reassurances. We needed an independent investigation of exactly what happened, what went wrong, and how it can be avoided for the future. Only then can we know what changes are needed. Only then can we believe such changes are real. Your Honor, I ask you to give Larry the strongest possible sentence which his actions deserve. For by doing so, you will send a message to him and to other abusers that they cannot get away with their horrible crimes. They will be exposed for the evil they are, and they will be punished to the maximum extent of the law. Let this, sen let this sentence strike fear in anyone who thinks it is okay to hurt another person. Abusers, your time is up. The survivors are here standing tall, and we are not going anywhere. And please, Your Honor, stress the need to investigate how this happened so that we can hold accountable those who empowered and enabled Larry Nasser, so we can repair and once again believe in this wonderful sport. My dream is that one day, everyone will know what the words Me Too signify, but they will be educated and able to protect themselves from predators like Larry, so that they will never, ever, ever have to say the words Me Too. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to go. That was well deserved. Thank you. I'm an adult. I'm listening. I'm sorry it took this long. But I assure you that all of the words that you and your sister survivors have said and will say are being considered for sentencing. I have to say there's a new state of the art. It's called Ali Rasmus Raisman. And <laughs> thank you. And Rachel. And every woman and parent and the doctors I've heard from that state of the art is change. It cannot remain. I agree with you in regard to the ranch. I read that. I didn't know there were still people there. I have no words for that. I think, though, they've heard you. <laughs> and you were never the problem, but you are so much the solution. You are unstoppable. You are part of an unstoppable growing force, an unstoppable, strong, loud voice 
the effects of your voice are far reaching. It's not just in this courtroom, but worldwide. And I know that even if the cameras weren't here, you are going to continue talking. I also, I can't tell, you're one of the strongest survivors who've been in front of me. I can't tell where you are in your healing. You don't, I don't want you to disclose that to me. But your words, I think, from my perspective, sitting here and listening to countless people talking about this, and there are more, you are so strong. You are that example to all of those other survivors that they can be you, not just as an Olympian, as a woman, as a strong survivor, as a voice. So the new state of the art, Allie, that's you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. That was powerful. Uh, you know, she's an Olympic gold athlete, uh, but this is what she will also be remembered for mm -hmm. this powerful speech where she essentially called out every single entity, every single person right. uh, involved in what she says was this horrific ordeal right. that she and her fellow athletes went through at the hands of Larry Nassar. And not only, you know, did she describe the way um, she was abused and the way the organization and adults that were s supposed to be protecting them, the way they dropped the ball in the past, she also questioned whether or not they're ready to take responsibility right now. And she pointed out that USA Gymnastics announced just recently that they were cutting ties with the uh, Caroli Ranch. You may have heard of uh, these the trainers, the coaches, uh, uh, Bell Bella and um, Bella and Marta Crowley. Marta, yeah, they the are sort of world famous for having this amazing uh, program <laughs> that has churned out these gold medal Olympians. And you know, Larry Nasser abused many of these Olympians at their ranch. Mm. So now uh, USA Gymnastics has said they are cutting ties with that ranch. They're breaking their lease, is how uh, Ali Reisman put it. But then she said they're athletes there right now, right. training. And she went on to say that uh, the the responsibility lies not just with Larry Nasser, who perpetrated these horrific crimes, but with USA Gymnastics, with the United States Olympic Committee. Uh, she called out every organization and every adult mm. who allowed a monster, in her words, like Larry Nasser, to do the things that he did to her and her fellow sisters. Can, and, we just, um, can we just remind people that this has been going on for several days now. It was supposed to last for four days where victims were coming forward, but so many want to come forward that it's going to continue on into the week. I'm sure uh, victims who have heard Ali speak are probably feeling empowered right, right now. Larry Nasser is sitting in the witness box, not uh, with his attorneys at, at, at the table that uh, normally is what occurs, and he asked the judge if he could no longer do that. Mm -hmm. He said uh, through his lawyers that, in, that mentally, his mental health, he can't handle it. And she and addressed that. She addressed that and she said the reason you are sitting in the witness box and not at the table is because I don't want these victims to have to turn around to look at you. They're going to be able to di talk directly to me and look at you. Larry Nasser has not lifted his head up, at least as far as we, we can, can tell, see. I don't yeah. think he's making any contact, eye contact at all. And the judge basically said, you know what, you can endure a few days of being discomfort, uncomfortable to make up for all the, the hours of pleasure, sickening pleasure that you took from these children and young ladies and young women. Uh, yeah. Allie Raisman is a hero to many after that. She was already one because oh, of yeah. her athletic accomplishments, but was such a powerful speech, uh, something that I think is going to resonate with so many people for a long, long time. And she, as she points out, it's incumbent that uh, this society, our society, figures out a way to fix this so that this never, ever happens again. She said, let this strike fear in the hearts of anybody who would perpetrate such a horrific crime on anybody.